This is your guide to running the Revered Duet RepRap firmware on your spare SKR board. A little while ago, I converted my second SK Go to Duet 3D hardware fitting a Maestro. At the time, I found elements of the RepRap firmware really good, and as I've got to know it a little bit better, I've seen just how powerful it is. The trouble is, if you want to run RepRap firmware, you previously needed to be exclusively tied to Duet 3D hardware. That's until now. Some outstanding members of the community have made it possible to fit RepRap firmware to a spare SKR version 1.3 or version 1.4 board. My Artillery 3D X1 was due for an overhaul, so I took the chance to fit an SKR version 1.4 turbo with TMC 2209s and get everything running with full web interface and BL touch. All of this is made possible by people much smarter than me, so this video is my attempt to break it down and to make it as easy to follow as possible. When I recently fitted a Duet 2 Maestro to my second SK Go, I was impressed by both the hardware and RepRap firmware. It printed well, but there was one major problem and that is the price of the hardware. The board I fitted was the cheapest available, the Maestro at US $113. Up from there we have the popular Duet 2 Wi-Fi at US $150 and then we have the latest generation Duet 3 which is $233 US dollars. There's no doubt these boards are very high quality and they do have some fantastic features but the reality is the price is going to put them out of reach for a lot of people. When I was making that video, I came across this article on Jay's blog. It had instructions on compiling RepRap firmware on the much more affordable Big Tree Tech SKR mainboards. Just for comparison, the top of the line SKR version 1.4 turbo with a full set of TMC 2209 drivers is US $50. And the add-on needed to add Wi-Fi functionality is only $6. Furthermore, if you have a spare Raspberry Pi, you can use that instead, and either option will give you the full web interface. From what I understand, this was first made possible by user SW, who created the original port to work on SKR mainboards. The project was then forked by Gloomy Andy and further developed to include pre-compiled binaries. On Gloomy Andy's GitHub, there is a wiki. As you can see, there's actually more boards than the SKR that are compatible and there's a good range of documentation for which I'll be following for this guide. It's also worth mentioning that as far as I can tell, Jay has done more than write a blog post and has contributed actively to the development. The getting started on RepRap firmware version 3 is perhaps the best place to start. This list is an overview of all of the components that you'll need. We're going to cover how to set them all up in this video and there are three distinct ways that you can set this up, so let's have an overview of those. The first method I would describe as bare bones, where we have the firmware on the board and we rely on a USB connection via Pronterface or a touchscreen to control the printer. However, this won't give us the web interface and is quite limited. The second method and my preferred is to add a cheap ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. This makes the SKR think it's a Duet 2 Wi-Fi and we have full control from the web interface on either a mobile or tablet or a computer. The third method recreates the Duet 3 setup where we use a Raspberry Pi as an SBC or single board computer to control the web interface and to run the main board in tethered mode. As for the printer I've chosen, it's my Artillery 3D X1. I use this printer all the time, but I've never properly installed the BL Touch wiring. In fact, the bottom of the case is unscrewed. I'm pretty embarrassed by this and it's been this way for a long time. I'm going to alter my VL Touch installation to copy the wiring of the Wagster mod, where we remove the LED built in next to the hot end and use those wires from the ribbon cable to route the VL Touch signal back to the mainboard neatly. The other reason to upgrade this printer is that it came with an 8 bit MKS Gen L, and the replacement SKR boards has the same footprint and plugs. We're going to start with the bare bones method because most of it still carries over to a Wi Fi installation. All we need to do is put certain files and folders on the SD card, put it into the SKR mainboard, power it up, and we'll be done. The first thing we do is make four empty folders, G codes, www, macros, and sys. We then work our way through the LPC configuration tool, 
which is a fork of the official RepRap firmware tool with the added bonus of outputting the extra files we need for our SKR installation. For the most part, this is the same as regular RepRap firmware, so you can follow their documentation as well as referencing the values in your Marlin firmware to get everything configured. And the beauty of RepRap firmware is, if you get this wrong at this stage, it's easy to update it later on without coming back to this interface. If you're using a touchscreen, make sure to tick Enable Support for Panel View on the final screen, and when you're done, click Finish. This is going to load up the majority of the files that we need for our SD card. If you click on Download Configuration Bundle as zip file, this zip will contain all of the files to go inside the sys folder. So unpack them to this location on the SD card. Most of these files are vanilla RepRap firmware, but the board's text file is unique to an SKR install. There was only one thing I needed to change, and that was to scroll to the bottom and update the number of TMC drivers. In my case, that was four. The other link to click is the Duet Web Control link. Again, this will download a zip file, of which the contents should be extracted to the www folder. When this is done, there's only one file remaining before we're ready to go. That's the firmware binary, and to get that, we come to the releases page of the GitHub, scroll down, and download the correct file. On my first test, I wasn't planning networking, but in my case, I used the Wi-Fi file without any issues. We insert the binary onto the SD card, and we rename it to simply firmware.bin. The Sidewinder X1 comes with an MKS TFT28 touchscreen. Connecting this is really quite easy. You only need four pins, five volts ground, RX and TX, connected as shown in the diagram. In terms of the RepRap firmware, all we need to do is open config.g, scroll down to the bottom and change the S from one to three to get our firmware to talk to the touchscreen. I'll have a download link for this in the description, but in terms of touchscreen firmware, all you need to do is edit the config file and set up the communication speed to speed 2 at 57,600. These five files go onto an SD card, which is inserted into the TFT, and when you power it on, it will update. Now that we have all of the SD card contents correct for our mainboard, we can insert the SD card into the SKR mainboard, power it up, and the firmware will be updated to RepRap. At this stage, you can check everything's working by connecting in Pronterface and issuing an M115, and that should confirm that you're running RepRap firmware on your SKR board. With this configuration, I was able to use a touchscreen to control the printer. There were some errors on the touchscreen from time to time, but after I cleared them, things resumed, and I was able to print successfully using the SD card that goes into the touchscreen. So that's the bare bones installation done and to do a Wi-Fi installation, we don't need to change anything with the SKR. All of the new work comes on the ESP8266. In fact, assuming you left network ticked in the configurator, all of the files for the SD card we downloaded previously will be ready to go. By far the easiest way to do this is to go to this Tindy page and order this breakout board with the ESP module already programmed and tested for only $15. I did things the hard way and ordered the ESP module separately. The first step is to flash firmware for this Wi-Fi module and the wiki has step-by-step -step instructions including installing ESP tool and then using Windows command line to flash the firmware while the ESP module is plugged in via USB. All that remains is the wiring connections and unfortunately that's quite involved. You're going to have to do some soldering and again the wiki comes to the rescue with detailed instructions including a link to this fritzing file with an interactive schematic so you can click on each connection and follow what pin goes to what. One thing I should point out that JP1 and JP2 are actually reversed from top to bottom compared to expansion 1 and 2 on the SKR board. I hit up my local electronic shop to get all of the resistors initially building a working prototype using a breadboard and jumper cables before working towards my final solution on a piece of proto board with the resistors and sockets on top and then all of the wiring connections made underneath. It looked pretty fragile so I coated the whole thing in hot glue, put it down on a silicon mat and after the glue dried I was able to trim off the excess board and have an end result that I hoped would be durable. Just remember that there is a ready to go option if you don't want to make all of this up yourself. 
Back on the wiki, we have our final instructions to connect via Pronterface and pass on our Wi-Fi details. After I did this, I was able to load the web interface and control the printer just like a genuine duet. So there's method two done, which I'm quite happy with, but I wanted to explore connecting using a Raspberry Pi as a single board computer. For the most part, this mirrors how a Duet 3 is set up with a Raspberry Pi connected via ribbon cable, which should be faster and more reliable than a USB connection. This configuration runs the main board in tethered mode. Because the Raspberry Pi is doing more of the work, the SD card on the SKR needs less files. In fact, all we need is the sys folder and the only thing inside that is the board TXT file. There's only two changes that need to be made. We're going to delete the code for ESP settings. Then we'll visit the wiki and copy the middle line and paste that in instead. As for the actual firmware file, this time we're going to download firmware.sbc. Again, it goes in the base of the SD card. And again, we need to rename it to simply firmware.bin. Now we need to prepare the Raspberry Pi. And once again, the wiki has everything step by step. Just like with Octoprint, you're going to download an image to burn onto an SD card. After downloading this image, I used Win32 Disk Imager to burn the image to the SD card, triple checking that I had the right device selected and I wasn't going to overwrite an external hard drive. After this is done, you'll notice on the SD card that's about to go into the Pi that the folder structures we set up manually for the other type of installs have been automatically created for us. Before we boot the Pi, we need to locate the file wpa underscore supplicant.conf and enter our SID and passcode for our Wi-Fi network. After the Pi boots, we need to connect via SSH and I'm using the free program PuTTY. Login has the normal username of Pi with Raspberry being the password. At the moment, our Raspberry Pi is running a setup intended for Duet 3. So we need to make some changes to get it to work to our SKR installation. If you scroll down the page, you'll see a lot of detailed commands you need to execute one after the other, or thanks to user PCR, you can simply enter these three commands that'll do everything automatically. To put these into PuTTY, we highlight them in the browser, copy, and then over in PuTTY, right click and press enter. We repeat for the next two lines, with the third line running the script that executes all of these individual commands. Now the script does take quite a long time to execute, probably around 10 to 15 minutes. But when it's done, you'll be prompted with a success message telling us that the process is complete. All we have to do is to connect the two together. And unfortunately, that means making a custom loom. There's a table on the wiki, which I've converted into this diagram. Eight pins are required to go into expansion two on the SKR, seven of them having inline resistors before they plug into the header on the Raspberry Pi. Here's my loom when it was about halfway done to show you how I have the resistor in line. And here's the finished product. I used DuPont connectors on either side and I heat shrunk over the top of the resistors to keep everything tidy. And here it is all connected and working and the web interface successfully loaded. If we come to the system section of the web interface, we'll notice that we don't have any configuration files properly set up. On this screen, we can come to upload system files and select the zip file that we previously downloaded from the configurator to update the firmware to suit the specs of our printer. Before I finished, here's some general tips that might help your installation if you're following along. The MKS Gen L that was in this printer is physically a straight swap to an SKR version 1.3 or version 1.4, apart from the fact that there's no hole for an SD card in the case of the printer. I put down some masking tape and sketched out the spot that I wanted, drilled two holes on the edges, used a cutting disc on a Dremel to join the holes together before cleaning everything up with a grinder. I've seen neater things, but it'll get the job done. If you don't want to set up a touchscreen, you can use any old mobile phone or tablet, enter the IP address and have a small version of the web interface as your controller. When you're setting up your RepRap firmware configuration, there's a table on the wiki with the names of all of the pins. For instance, I set up the heatsink fan to come on over 50 degrees, and I was able to correctly refer to it as HE1. Sensorless homing is compatible with 2209s in this setup. There's instructions on the wiki on how to tune it. 
The X1 has really accurate end stops, so I opted out of using sensorless homing, and that means I had to snip the diagnostic pins on my 2209s. This is the same as Marlin and a limitation of the main board. Finally, I did get a BL Touch working, and as people warned me in the comments of the previous RepRap firmware video, it was quite a task. In the RepRap instructions is a link to this excellent guide. Only trouble is, it's slightly out of date because the RepRap firmware has updated to version 3 now. It still had enough content to get me most of the way there, and I'll leave my final configuration file linked in the description to help anyone else out. So there we have it, and pretty much everything is working as it should be, and as a project, this was extremely fun to get going. The only problem for me is that after I put the Wi-Fi inside the metal case, its reliability suffered, I think it's dropping packets, and I'll need to investigate either an external antenna or mounting the ESP module somewhere else. Thanks again to those community members and all their time and effort that has made this possible, and let me know in the comments if this reduced cost has made this something that you're willing to attempt. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.